So in this probably the final episode of this series, as I said, this is going to be a mini series. Uh, we are going to try to deploy our site to Zeit now. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm going to show you the solution from the problem uh, that or, or actually homework that I gave you from the last episode. And that was to create this drop down menu right here. So I'm just going to quickly go over it. Uh, of course, the code will be on GitHub, so you can download it from there. Okay, so just a few notes about the assignment or task or homework that I gave you at the end of the last episode. Uh, we, you need to create this drop down menu. And to do that, of course, you would go to WordPress and create uh, those links. Uh, but however, watch out, these are custom links with custom URLs and I will explain why in just a second. And on in our code, we are just checking does this item that we are currently looping through have child items or are they maybe undefined? Because uh, if something in our API, our menu API has child items, uh, they will have this child items array right here. But if they not, uh, th that array won't even exist in our API. Okay, so we are looping through that. And we are, of course, then defining uh, the segment and HRF. But check this out. So here we are defining the URL, uh, but in our main items, we define the slug. This is because if we check out our API again, as you will see, okay, so for our homepage is just homepage, but URL for our products page is actually separate API dot Plosner and so on. We don't want to use this. Of course, you can use this and then remove uh, this plusnar.com from it or localhost or whatever you have here. Uh, but in our case, uh, we don't want to do that. And we are just going to use URL for these child items. So as you can see, the URL is right here. It was okay for us to use slugs because those slugs correspond to the products and contact and so on pages that we have on our site. So my advice to you would be when creating this sort of a navigation, so we kind of screwed up in the previous episodes, but actually we should have made all of our links to be custom links so that we can easily use those URLs right? Because right now we can use URLs for products and about and so on, because they will have the absolute URL uh, to our pages. And we can not use that in our cyber application. Okay, I hope that's clear. Of course, uh, this, uh, this effect right here of drop down menu is just pure CSS, I'm not going to go into it. Uh, but as you can see, it works. So it will take you to the desired categories. So for us to deploy this site, we will need two things. First of all, we will need uh, an account on Zite now. I already talked about Zite now in one of my previous videos. So check that video out if you don't have any idea what Zite now is. Uh, we will need, of course, to do some configuration because this is going to be an SSR site, so server rendered site. And the next thing you will need, you would need to put your API online somewhere. Mine is currently on separateapi.plusner.com. And this is just sh normal shared hosting, right? Uh, I'm currently using uh, Fast Comet, but you can use whatever you want. GoDaddy, HostingGator, or whatever the populars are right now. So just normal shared hosting, it would be very good if you had HTTPS, which I have right here. Uh, because if you don't, uh, there might be some problems with fetching your data because uh, Zite will try to block the data from only HTTP sites. It will work, but you will have some problems. Okay, so that's about it. You need to host your WordPress somewhere. I'm not going to go into this. This is just a normal WordPress hosting. Uh, you, can, uh, you can find million tutorials online about it. And uh, we are going to try to deploy our site on Zite now. So if you have your Zite now account, uh, you know that, and if you played with it, you know that you can push some stuff to it without any configuration. So we can maybe try just doing this now. 
and try to see if this if this is going to work in some way. Okay, so of course our build has failed and if we go to this address right here, we can see what actually failed. You get some warnings, uh, but to put it simply, Zeit doesn't know how to handle separate applications. So to handle them, uh, you will need a plugin called uh, now separate from this guy right here. And uh, you have to do some configuration for your application to do that. So first of all, we need to define a now ignore file and we are going to put this in it. So if we go to our code editor, we can create in our root folder, we are going to create that now ignore, nope. So dot now ignore file, and this is going to be in it. Okay, save this. Uh, next thing we need to do, you need to define your now dot JSON file. So I'm going to go right here and create another file, which is going to be called now dot JSON. Okay, so we are just going to copy this right here in that file. Okay, so this is for our server side rendered usage. You need to go, uh, if you go to the end of this, you will see that you need to set up a server in some kind of way. Uh, at the end of this right here, you can use a Polka server or Express server. We are going to use the Polka server and all you need to do is actually just go to your server.js file which is right here. Uh, you need to say const app is equal to polka and then you wanna export app.handler. Okay, so if we save this, that should kind of be it. Uh, but as you will see, we will run into problems and I had a lot of problems with this until I figured it out. So let's just do now once again and see what will fail. Okay, so we didn't get any errors right here, but if I copy this and go right here, uh, you can see our site or maybe even not. So as you can see, we get an internal server error. Okay, so why is that? If I go right here, so we get to our site, uh, you will see that this one is ready. If I click on it, I can see the log for it. And as you can see right here, the connection is refused to uh, 127001. So we are trying to access these categories from here. Of course, this currently doesn't work because in our application, in our .nv file, uh, we have this configured like this, right? So we have our uh, separate API.localhost WP JSON. These are our, our endpoints. So how do we do that for now? Uh, the now, first of all, is not going to read our .env variable. So that's a bummer. And uh, so we have to define those variables right here. And to do that, uh, you would just do something like this. So uh, env is going to be separate app API URL and then this right here and this right here. Of course, you're going to replace these URLs with your own URLs. Please don't use mine. Okay, so we are going to uh, try to run this again. Did I save it? Yes, okay. Okay, so let's test it out right now. Uh, you have to hard refresh it once because uh, it loaded from cache just just uh, a second ago. So as you can see, this works. Let's test if uh, these categories work. As you can see, this is now a little bit more slower uh, than on our local machine because it is getting our data from the internet. Okay, so as you can see, everything works. And this is the way you would deploy your site online using WordPress and using Zite, right? So you would have to have 
actually two servers. One is going to be your reside server or some server that is able to handle uh, server side rendering. And the other one is just going to host your WordPress installation, which you can find very, very cheaply. Okay, so this is it for this episode and probably this series. But if you guys have any questions or maybe want me to cover some specific topics about Saper, WordPress and Svelte, please just let me know down in the comments and I may create one or two more episodes in this series depending on how interesting your suggestions are. Of course, everything we did in this episode will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.